Okay, and we see basically um, a synopsis of basically everything that's being done here, partition tables, everything. So we can just hit install. Um, installation can take a little bit, probably take about five minutes depending on the system. So we will go ahead and let this run through. All right, now once the installation is complete, you should come to this window here and it'll let you know the installation is complete and you're going to restart the system. So what I want to go ahead and do now is click the restart now button and it'll reboot the virtual machine. All right, now it says uh, to please remove the disk and close the tray. So what we can do here is, let me exit here, go to VM at the top or just right click on the tab and go to settings. We want to go to the virtual machine settings and we want to go down to the CD DVD drive and we want to click on the use physical drive. Now go ahead, your drive letter may be different, but go ahead and use the default drive letter because if you try to use auto detect, it won't let you do so. It'll make you power off and everything. And just to simplify things, we're going to leave it at the default drive letter. So go ahead and do that. Click OK to apply the changes. Go ahead and override the lock. And once you've done so, go ahead and press Enter to uh, continue on booting into the system. And it'll take a moment here. It'll restart the system, and it'll basically go through all the verification and checking and so forth. And it should load you up to your uh, your normal desktop or a login prompt, rather. Now, once we've finished loading up, it should pre present us with a login prompt. So for here, we can enter in the username we created earlier, which in my case will be Mushroom Headbangers. Uh, password will be the one I designated, which is Elite. And then it'll pre present us with another command line to which we'll type in start x to launch the x desktop. So we'll go ahead and enter that in, let it load. It'll pre or load up the loading screen, and then it'll start the desktop for us. So we can just pre or resume from there. Okay, now we've loaded the desktop, we see this little window pop up. Just click ignore if you do get that. And um, right now my primary monitor is resolution is 1920 by 1280, I believe. So the resolution of the backtrack uh, desktop is pretty off. So first thing we want to do is change this, um, the uh, desktop resolution. Now um, the uh, OS itself has a uh, under settings control panel. We can change and alter the theme, appearance. There's a lot of little details and tweaking you can do. Unfortunately, I, I haven't personally located an option to change the background. So we can do that through command line though. So I'll go and show you how to do that. We want to launch a terminal window or a uh, console window. And uh, first thing I'm going to show you do, how to do is log in as a root user. Um, now that you have it installed, there's a lot of instances you'll come across where you need to log in as a root user to actually proceed with something. This is kind of a security thing. So to log in to a, as a root user, you type in sudo space su and then preside, or present your username password, which will be delete for me. And it'll show you that you're now the use, uh, root user, so you can proceed from there. And um, right for the change in the background or the resolution, we'll type in xrandr. And we'll see it presented for us after we enter a list of resolutions we can use. I have a widescreen monitor for my primary monitor, so I will go ahead and specify a widescreen resolution. I'm going to choose 1280 by 960, so I'm going to use up my whole desktop. So I'll type in XRAND R again, space hyphen S, and then specify that resolution, which was 1280 by 960, and hit enter. And we'll see that the resolution changed, the background's repeating, that's fine. We can change the uh, background image at a later time. So um, that's how you change the resolution. Now at this point, the last thing we want to do is we want to install VMware Tools. VMware Tools basically gives you a little extra functionality. See how the mouse is flickering? I don't know if you can see it in the screen recording. But um, th all that will be fixed. Um, mouse movement will be uh, resolved as well. It just makes, basically makes it a lot smoother as though it's a host machine rather than getting that feeling that you're in a virtual machine. It makes it feel a lot more native. So what we'll do here is install um, VMware Tools. Um, this whole procedure will differ from user to user most likely. Um, some of you... Their configuration may be different than mine. So what we want to first want to do is left click on VM at the top of your um, VMware work VMware workstation or VMware player window. So we select VM, select a drop down, and click on install VMware tools. And we should see a little window come up here. And um, what we can do is if we open up Conqueror in the bottom left hand corner, this is basically just our explorer window. We can go to the directory MNT, which is the mount directory, and normally what you should see is a CD-ROM uh, folder. You may not see it, and most chances are you're not going to see it. So what we're going to do here is open up a terminal window. I'm going to go ahead and log in as an admin to uh, prevent any complications. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and CD, which is say, change directory space, and then navigate to this directory. Okay, and at this point I'm going to make a directory, mkdir space CD-ROM. I'm going to make a directory called CD-ROM. And now we do we see it appears in the Explorer window. So at this point, um, let me go ahead and first show you. When you go to install VMware Tools, you'll notice if you go to, to the virtual machine settings, 
that it creates an ISO image of the VMware tools installation, a Linux ISO, as the uh, CD drive. So it'll, it'll go ahead and change that for you automatically. What we want to basically do is mount the image as a CD drive. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that really quick. So for we, we want to go ahead and swap over to the DEV directory. And we'll see here we have a CD-ROM3. That the lettering may differ for you, so be sure to verify that it is listed as CD-ROM3 for you. And once you've done that, we can go ahead and mount DEV space CD or slash CD-ROM3 space MNT for that mount directory and specify that CD-ROM directory. Hit enter. Oh, I missed a command here. CD-ROM3 space slash MNT CD-ROM. Okay, it'll tell us it's right protected. That's fine. We just need to uh, read from it anyways. So at that point, once it's mounted, we should be able to go to the CD-ROM, and we'll now see the contents of that VMware Tools installation. And I did not mean to open up, up but that's fine. We'll see it's a .targz. So we can go ahead and copy this down. We need to extract the contents of that archive. So we can go ahead and change directories to the temporary directory. That's cd for change directory space slash temp and we're now in the temp directory so we can go ahead and type in tar zxf space and then the directory of that installation i already copied it down so we can just paste it and hit enter it'll take a few moments for that uh, archive to extract it's just going to extract into the temporary directory it's going to create a folder for us and once that folder is created, we can go ahead and run that installation script. So let's give it a moment here while this completes. Okay, we see that the uh, we have another command line presented for us, so we know the archive has been extracted. And at this point, we should be able to just type in dir to see the directory listing. And we see here the VMware tools distrib listed. So right now what we want to do is we want to change into that directory. So now we see that we're in that directory, and we can go ahead and run that script. So we'll type in period slash VMware install.pl. And it's going to start presenting with all the options of the script. It's going to ask us in which directory you want to install and so forth. Just hit enter for everyone. It's going to keep pro popping them up. It's, the whole process takes about two minutes. Uh, some of them will last longer than others as far as the procedure goes. But every now and then, I'll just ask you and just hit enter. Don't even worry about what it says. You can just continuously press enter until it's finished installing. And uh, once it's installing, you should be good to go at that point. Um, basically, you can make changes. You can save, customize the theme, create files, save hash tables, whatever you want to do. You should be able to create on this as though it's an actual, um, actual partition on a hard disk. All your changes will take effect. You reboot. You're back to where you are. All your files are still there. Um, so if you don't want to do this method, you can also use a... Um, ISO, you can basically use it as though you're on a live CD. The only bad thing about that is any changes don't actually um, stay there. And as you can see here, I have several um, virtual machines already listed here. Um, it's, it's best to um, keep track of all these VMDKs because they can start eating up hard, hard disk space. So I already have like my Backtrack 4, I have Flag, Navion OS, and so forth. Um, some of these aren't all VMDKs, though. But you can just create as many as you'd like. Uh, it's best to keep them all in one directory. But anyways, that's how you install an operating system into a virtual machine. This can be used for Windows, Linux, Solaris, doesn't matter. It's the same procedure, pretty much. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Mushroom Headbangers, subscriber, uh, uh, well, die.